Hi, today I'm chatting with Alisa Kutzel, a teacher from Northern Carolina. Nope, Northern California. I always get that wrong. Alisa has some really, really great tips for making sewing with kids in the classroom easy. And she's actually got some really, really sweet stories about the kids in her class. And the one I really loved was about the little boy who sewed his softy. And because of the softy, couldn't go home right now because it was waiting for the art show, which was in a few months. He asked Alyssa if he could visit the softy at recess. Alyssa had a great solution to that problem, which you'll find out in the interview. Hope you enjoy it. And one last thing. In this interview, you'll only see Alyssa, but you'll hear me asking the questions because somehow when I was in Zoom, I forgot to press some button or I pressed the wrong button. So you only see Alyssa, but it's a great interview. So I hope you enjoy it. Today I'm chatting with Alyssa Kutzel, an art teacher in the US. Alyssa has just finished a unit teaching her students to sew and I'm looking forward to seeing how it went. Alyssa, thanks for agreeing to be my guest. Um, can you just introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Um, thanks for having me. My name is Alisa, Alisa Kutzel. Um, I teach in Northern California and Bay Area and um, I am an textile artist. That's what I kind of identified um, as in the times where I created my own art before I was teaching. I feel like I don't really have that much time to do that <laughs> anymore. Once you're teaching, you don't. <laughs> no, all of my creative energy and all of my time goes into teaching someone else to make art and that just has to be okay for now. Um, so I teach TK, which is um, trans transitional kindergarten, kind of like a pre-K to fifth grade. So I have about um, around 630 students. Wow. <laughs> That's, and a I, yeah, That's a lot of kids. Uh, and then I, I um, rotate with our garden teacher. So I will see uh, the lower grades while she's seeing the upper grades and then they come the upper grades come to me and so we see them three weeks at a time rotation. Oh wow, sounds great. So you just did a unit on teaching your kids to sew? I did. I introduced sewing to my fifth grade. I have a hundred students in the fifth grade and I actually this past semester was doing two sewing things. I was sewing uh, with the fifth graders and then I was also teaching um, an enrichment sewing class after school and I had about 22 students um, in that class and uh, very different projects because uh, teaching 100 students versus teaching 22 yeah. students. it's a difference <laughs> for instance, it's a lot, of, a lot more personal attention and a lot obviously we had a lot more time with the enrichment class so I was able to go in much more into depth um, in terms of teaching them different kind of hand stitches. And um, they, we actually, our first lesson was a Zenki. That oh, is what they perfect. Did. That's absolutely perfect. It was, it was fantastic. And the, so uh, the variations that they created and um, all of the things that they've created after was fantastic to see. And uh, they ended up, their final project was they designed and, um, uh, made their own squishmallow or own type of a squishmallow um stuffed animal which is something that's really i don't know sure in australia but it's super no it might be i haven't i mean i've heard of them because you mentioned them but yeah so they uh, are very popular here they are like these rounded uh shape um very very soft stuffed animals so they made their own squishmallows it's even Absolutely. better than buying a squishmallow. Yes, exactly, because they really got to uh, make it what you know what their own. Yeah, personalized. With the, with the fifth graders, obviously, I couldn't do I couldn't do something that was um, so complicated, and I didn't have I don't have them for that long. Um, so we created pizza slices, and I was very very inspired by. Uh, um, uh, Tennessee art teacher Cassie Stevens yep. um, that you know she's uh, fantastic and she does a lot of sewing with her students and she has some really great resources for it so I was able to draw a lot of my um, inspiration from what she has done and it kind of gave me a lot of confidence to do it and sewing is my favorite thing because and I 
So had you sewn with your students before? Or was this the first time you you had sewn with students? So uh, it's the first time I've done such a large group. Um, so the way that I have my classroom set up, because I teach art and STEAM, STEM is what um, this is. That's what I teach in my classroom. And I have stations around my classroom that are focused on different things. So I'll have like a building station and a maker space. And wow. one of my stations is fabric station. So I have a dress form and all kinds of different fabrics. And I have all kinds of sewing accessories. So if the students are interested um, in sewing, I would sit with a smaller group and teach them um, how to get started. But I didn't, I've never did it so, like where I had everybody oh, in the grade that was required. Whether they wanted to sew or not, they, they were all sewing. They were all sewing. <laughs> what sort of preparation did you do um, before the class? With Because you're sewing for the first time with such a large group. Um, so the main, the biggest thing is I went to the our local fabric store to choose um, fabric that would uh, be the closest to a pizza crust. Um, and I wanted specific fabric. I wanted fleece because we were making pillows. So I didn't want to use felt. I wanted something softer, but I still wanted non-fraying fabric. Yep. So they didn't have to worry about, uh, they could choose whether the stitches could be on the outside or inside. It was a personal preference as opposed to a necessary one if there was yep. cotton. Um, so the biggest thing was fabric prep because I um, I bought fabric in yards and then I had to cut them down um, to where they could get the pattern out of their smaller pieces, but I still yeah. had to cut those cut pieces them, yes. down. I, like, I couldn't give them a yard and be like, they cut would away. cut out a piece yeah. of the slice out of the middle of the meter. Absolutely, you know? yes. They'll cut right in the middle of even if it's only a small circle. And then they'd be like, Miss Alita, <laughs> garbage. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants that. Um, so I had to. Uh, so the bit, the best purchase I ever made was I got electric scissors that cut through fabric. Oh, wow. Very I, good. That was just like butter that I was just <laughs> cutting through them like no one's business. Um, so that was the biggest prep, the because I prepped the pieces for the pizza crust, and then I prepped the pieces for the tomato sauce that went on top, and then the rest, anything that they wanted for toppings, they we used felt for that, so they could just cut their own Whatever. pieces. In terms that. of teaching the kids stitches or threading the needle, tying and not, did you do any pre-prep with the kids on how to do any of that? No, we just jumped right in. Jumped uh, right in. Yeah, we. And, uh, they came in. We talked a little bit about um, that we're gonna sew, and then I have my document camera, and we just went step by step. I also had, um, I had a video. Um, Cassie Stevens has a really good sewing video, and um, so when I was walking around, I could show a little bit of a video, and then I yeah. could walk around. And, and help them with that that part um so it was a lot of a lot of students didn't know how to tie a knot yeah absolutely what so did you that was that was frustrating because we just had to go very slow uh, it was frustrating for them I was I I knew that going in just based on the shoes uh and yeah. my own children who are only wear slip-ons um but uh, I bought um, the needles that I use are the really large eye hole. Chenille? Like, yes. Chenille? Yeah, yeah. yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. um, it's by Clover. It's number 18. I yeah, think you, you Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Those, and yes. what thread did you use with them? So I use crochet thread number yeah. 10. Um, like. Yes, because yeah. it's just the best. The yeah. embroidery. I can't, it's just too many threads and I needed it's them to good. be nice and thick so they could handle it. It could go through the eye of the needle and I had it and I have it on all neutral colors yep. so they could match up to what they need. Um, it's really strong and yeah, I've been really happy with that. The only thing is, <laughs> uh, but I, I think that would just happen with any thread is 
threading the needle. Yes, um, I was going to ask you, threading the needle, how did that go? Yeah, so it, it's it's really dependent dependent on the students. Some just got it like this. They knew it. Um, I also had to be, my own method is, you know, lick the fingers. Oh, I know, I know. And I didn't oh, really... I know. No, exactly. we don't do that anymore that <laughs> because I know inevitably they're going to come to me with oh, oh. it's not threading and then I would have to get a soggy piece of thread yeah absolutely um, so there was another uh trick that um again Cassie Stevens uses and that's by taking a little piece of paper and holding it like, a, like a hot dog and then yeah. and then threading it so some some students ended up the whole time every time they needed to thread it they would use that little trick but for the most part it's they it just requires just a tiny bit of patience so yeah it, exactly there are those that cannot wait yeah uh, and then most of them were will figure it out so that was fine and then um and then the, the other part that was kind of the most frustrating for the students a little bit for me is um everybody does it at such different speed yeah and there are so many steps that i feel like they need to know like two steps ahead at what's coming but um especially in the spring my fifth graders are kind of revert to kindergarten where it's a one-step direction only yeah and absolutely if i say <laughs> Okay, here are the things that you need to remember. They're going to no, no, forget about it. It's just not work. happening. So I had to really go, okay, everyone is going to thread the needle. Yeah. Okay. Now everyone's going to poke the needle through the fabric. And so for those that have done it before or that just do it faster, you know, they had to wait until everyone else got there. And then, so there was like this. Bit of white. Pool. Yeah. Yeah. How did the and kids then, go with the um with the um oh, fleece? Because the fleece has got a slight stretch in it, which the felt doesn't. Did they have any problems sewing with the fleece? No, no. That they really enjoyed the feel of the fleece. Oh, so they love it. The, <laughs> the only thing that it it was a little bit thick for them to push the needle through, so it did require a little bit of pushing. Um, pushing and like strength with their fingers to push it through. So I actually ended up having a package of um, uh, thimbles and some students use thimbles to push their needle through. Otherwise it was fine. Um, you can actually it, use a slightly smaller needle because 18, you know, can sometimes with that pearl cotton, the crochet cotton, depending if you use like a size eight, you can use mm -hmm. a slightly th uh, smaller, smaller needle, which is a high number. So like a 20 or 22, which mm -hmm. means the needle itself is thinner, still has mm -hmm. that large eye for the thicker materials. So it goes through a little bit easier with kids. I like yeah. using the chenille 24 and I use sewing cotton. And one of the reasons I use sewing cotton doubled over is because I can use that really fine needle so that if um, the felt or the fabric is a little bit thicker, they it's um, easier for the kids to pull through the through the fabric. So yeah. that's one of the reasons. I mean, I use different threads. I'll use embroidery threads sometimes and and the crochet cotton and the sewing cotton because of the needle size. So I love the twenty the chenille 24 because it's okay. so awesome. thin and it makes it really fun to sew with. So that's just one of the um one of the things I do. I was gonna ask you, what was the kids' reaction when you told them you were going to sew with them? Um I <laughs> I it was mixed. Uh, some were very excited, especially ones that frequented already the sewing the sewing station or fabric station. Some were just kind of like, uh, I, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know about that. I had a few students who had really bad experience with sewing that they just were like, nope, I've tried and I just can't do it, and I'm terrible at it. And they just yeah. started it out with like, no, this is not. I, I'm not, not going to do well, but uh, I've had it. It ended up being really good experience, um, in my opinion. And um, I actually had uh, what some of my students go. Actually, fifth graders go to this um, 
outdoor education camp during the oh. year. And then the students that don't end up going, and this year it was about 10, they stay with me for like four days. They just, they go around and do like different kind of volunteer things in different classrooms, but then they're with me for the rest of the time. And uh, that's pretty much all we did was so. Oh, excellent. <laughs> After we had started this project, and the, happened to be like that, that that group that stayed that that's all now that they had access to all of these things in the classroom um i had one student he was working on like a, a stuffed animal and he was so excited because he was like i'm i'm going to trick my mom into thinking oh. that i that i bought this and he was oh. like so like oh she's gonna be so mad at me she's gonna be like yelling <laughs> and then I'm gonna be like no I made this oh my and he was goodness like just so excited and then he went home because he finally finished it he went home and then the next day I said okay so how did it go and was she fooled and he was like no because she saw my stitches at the front <laughs> and he was like ah next time I'm gonna put them in a bag where <laughs> she will not see them so you oh, just, is... uh, I thought it was so funny because that's one of the things that we talked about is, you know, why don't you put the stitches in the back? Oh, and another sweet. student had, ta had taken her parents to the fabric store and they ended up apparently spending a significant amount of money because she had then uh, added about 20 different stuffed animals to oh. her collection. And uh, I had a student and that was kind of one of my like, most uh uh rewarding maybe experiences is I have a student that let's say not um usually that involved into the projects and he had connected with that pizza slice so much he would actually come to my classroom during recesses to yeah. visit visitation rights um mm -hmm. to his pizza slice and he would take oh my goodness to recess and then he would bring it back after recess and Aww. he would say goodbye and he would leave and then finally he said can I just have enough materials to make another slice so that wow. I can take that one home because I keep all of the artwork until the art show we do um I put on an art show in May oh, and then okay. I all of the artworks back to them but he was like I just can't I can't wait that's why he needed his visitation rights yeah. now I get so it made another oh. slice and he took that one and he took it home and then the other one oh. he's going to wait until May and I thought I was like you know he found he found it he found something that he really connected with it's really interesting actually I find sometimes the boys get more excited about sewing than the girls and it's like yes they just can't wait to like I've often had the boys what are we making next they haven't finished the first project and they just yeah. want to sew and it's like you know, not what you expect sometimes, but it's so nice to see that the boys love the sewing. And I sort of think it's maybe because the boys don't get as much sort of um, craft or sort of manual. So I don't know what it is, but I've noticed that the boys are so, so excited about yes. it. Yes, overwhelmingly so that ones that have um, kind of expressed how much that uh, they enjoyed it and, and, keep coming back and telling me all of these other things that they've made and bringing me things that they've made and their parents sending me pictures. Yeah. Uh, it's been overwhelmingly boys. Yeah. The amount of the, like, like um, messages I get from parents just sort of saying that the kids are so excited and they're so happy and the kids are fun, you know, found something that they love. It's yeah. really, really amazing. So it's it's so almost like it opens this door of of imagination of like I can create my own my own things. You yes. know, things that I that I can't um find anywhere that I can just yeah. make it. And we in my classroom in general, we are so much about like just making making things uh, ourselves and sewing has just elevated it that that much more. Yeah, I know some of the kids will actually say, look, I can't believe I've made something real. It's something they can hold and touch and show to people. And for them, it's like, this is real and I've made it myself. And it's like, all of a sudden, like you said, this whole world is opened up of, of creativity and all the things that they can do. And it's like, 
you see the faces at the end of the lesson and you think, wow, it's like so nice to see. I mean, you've got these classes that are so sort of like hectic and so busy. And yeah. the end, when you see the kids' faces, you think, oh, you know, it was yeah, worthwhile. It was worth it. Yeah. It's so nice. I know. I have, I had several students bringing in um, things that have broken, like, like there are other stuffed animals that come apart or yeah. buttons came off and they would come into the classroom would bring it in their little Ziploc bags and they would sit in the class and they would uh, fix they would re-sew buttons onto clothes onto the stuffed animals clothes and they would fix holes in the like something they have made and um I I keep telling them like this is a skill you it's good you're gonna have it for your whole it's life a it's like riding a bike you are never yeah. going to forget how to do yeah. it you may forget how to like you know, do the final knot and you'll have to look that up. But all of everything else, like this is, that's that's with you forever. Yeah, absolutely. I know my friend Amy from sewing school, she was teaching and she once a year or once a term, I don't know what it was, would have a little sewing hospital. So all the kids in the school, if they had a toy that needed to be fixed, like sewing, they'll bring it to the sewing hospital and there'd be a, a class of kids who would actually repair the toys or the stuff. Oh my was. gosh, I love that. Isn't it amazing? It was so, such a lovely idea. So it's amazing once kids have this skill, because it just opens up a whole new world. I was going to ask you, um, any supplies that you found particularly good to use in the classroom? Um. Well, for me personally, it was the electric scissors. That yes, was a, that's a very good one. It was so great. And I uh, even used this opportunity to buy myself a brand new pair of just like regular handheld fabric oh. scissors that no one is absolutely allowed to touch ever. Allowed to touch <laughs> under fear of being expelled from my classroom. <laughs> um, and for the Students, uh, what was extremely helpful is on every table I had an, a magnetic a magnetic wand, and they knew for a fact that there were four needles when they started, and they had to be four needles when they were done. And if there were not four needles, then everybody needed to find those missing needles. So I knew exactly always the count of, mm -hmm. uh, and it was a place to uh, to put them on, and um, that was it really saved me um, having to find them with my feet. Yeah. Did you use pins with the kids or sewing I did, clips? I did use pins. Um, I I bought um, a whole bunch of pins on Amazon and they were, let's say, not a great quality. Um, they were yeah. pretty cheap. That's so, one of the problems that I always say with, with materials is that you know you need good quality materials because otherwise I mean bad quality needles or the thread breaks I've had the problem with it you know bought thread and it just broke and it was like okay that's it I'm going to make sure that the needles the thread the pins I use are yeah. actually good quality because otherwise it's so frustrating it is it is and unfortunately when um when you're talking about a you know a classroom um I have a very strict and not a very large budget that, yeah it's the other that problem is through the year yeah. and so the are actually our biggest frustration was scissors i yeah. i can't i couldn't Good. afford to buy a dedicated yeah. set of fabric scissors for yeah. 30 students it's per, too hard per yeah. class so we just ended up using the big scissors that also cut cardboard so you yeah can that it was not a great experience for them. Um, I know it's very hard. I mean, the fabric scissors are expensive, yes, but you can't afford in a classroom with the the but teachers have such low budgets to buy them. So it's a yes. matter of you know. Well, and and to be able to you know, uh, I have to be able to be very creative about the supplies that I buy to be able to use them in more than just one project. Yeah. You know? With fabric scissors, it would be really hard. <laughs> I would never be able to use it with anything else but fabric. And I just Sorry. don't, I, I just don't right now sew with younger grades to that level to be able to justify that kind of yeah. um, spending. But yes, that in ideal world, 
that would have been the one supply. Been, that, yeah. Lovely. Um, I was going to ask you any um, any tips for teachers who are thinking uh, of starting with their kids. Patience. <laughs> yes, lots of patience. Lots of patience. Uh, uh, knowing that it's all worth it in the end. Um, but um, it was really helpful having an example of every stage of what the fabric looks like with just oh. the pattern drawn out, with what it looks like with a pattern pinned. And then just having, like, I just pretty much had to make seven versions of of the project with and ended at every stage you know what does it look like when it was just cut out with nothing what does it look like when just the first part has been sewn what does it look like when uh they sewed it um you know and one of the stitches on the inside and then having to uh flip it flip it the right side out to stuff it so what does it look like when it's stuffed so having all of these like all along um st stages so they could see okay what's coming up next did and you that's have the photos or do you have the real oh, i had i have physical i had i just i just made, made them. them all and they were just yeah. around the room so the kids could actually go they are they are just attached to my whiteboard okay they could see where we are and where where are they and where should they be going and you know where where is going to end up Okay, and that sounds amazing. All of that, I still got in my home. What do I do? <laughs> what are we doing? What's going on? So I just could be like, look, where are we? there it where is. Exactly. I sometimes exactly. in my classes <clears throat> have the kids are sewing and they're looking all over the place. I've got to remind them that when they're sewing that, you have to look at their work because they sometimes <laughs> are so busy chatting or looking somewhere oh. else. Yes. Actually not looking where they're sewing up. I even had one girl sewed her project onto her clothing. Oh. <laughs> I haven't had that happen yet, but I could see that because there is a lot of I I um my class is almost never in silence. Um I love when there's you know chatting and 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 so and I told them. Listen, sewing has always been a very social yes. activity. Yeah, absolutely. That's how people like, you know, they they worked on their quilts, they yeah. worked on their mending, and that's when they kind of created their community when they talked about things that are happening. So yeah. I love that you're talking, but they worked and talked. You yeah. just talking <laughs> and not so much working. So that's what we need to. That's where we need to realize the balance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. So you're going to sew with your classes again? Definitely. Um, I have had a lot of requests. Uh, a lot from so, the kids. Yes. Yeah, so uh, because all of my grades come through my you know same space, they see what other grades do. Yeah. And younger grades were always like are checking out what older ones are doing. <laughs> So they can make sure that I'm teaching them the same thing. The, the only thing is I despise teaching the same projects. I get bored and I have to always switch things up for me. Yeah. Uh, so yes, for sure I'm doing sewing, but I probably will do something other than the pizza slices because I just always need to be doing something. something yeah. If you're going to, will you teach the younger classes, do you think? Are we going to stay with stick with year five for the moment? Um, I don't think that I would go much, much younger. Although I have to say with my enrichment class, um, a lot of my students were in third grade and they did really well. Yeah. But I would say fourth and fifth is right where um, the hand-eye coordination and they to... 45 minute class that's that's all yeah. sewing how many were in that 45 minute class you don't have all 100 <laughs> no no I have um I have 30 30 to 34 kids huge uh, class. class yeah wow. some of my classes are smaller um some some of the classes were only 20 uh so that was much easier but yeah the biggest class is uh in this particular semester, the biggest class was 30 or 31 students. 
Yeah, it's a big class. At least and it makes a big difference. That 10 kids. Oh, yeah. it's huge difference. 20 is like a nice number. You know, you yes. can do it, you know, but once you get into 30, that's, you know, like half again more problems than the 20, like in you know, that can have, that can come up and knots, threading, tangles. Yes. So I ended up having to rely a lot on the students that got it. Yeah. And, to were, and that they were able to help others at their table. Yeah. That was also a nice thing. I always get the kids to ask, you know, someone on the on either side of them if they need help, because it's good for the kids to have another kid helping them. And that particular kid gets a bit of a boost in self-confidence because yes. they know how to do something so that's and sometimes they're able to explain it in a different way than yeah. than I would like in yeah. a way that makes sense yeah absolutely so, Alisa, is there anything else you'd like to add that I've forgotten to ask you um you probably have <laughs> I don't think so I think we've covered pretty much everything um uh, I did end up buying, you know, I, I bought way more stuff, uh, fiber fill yeah, yeah. that was necessary for the project. So I, that was another tip that I was going to say, like, it's good to have a lot more because uh, they uh, are, they get really excited, like love stuffing. Oh, this, oh yes. Did yeah. You so then stuff? it inspires them to do all of these other things that would also include stuffing uh, the fiber fill into their creations. Uh, I've had a few softies that actually burst at the seam because they yes. <laughs> yes, I have one particular student that I'm always, I'm always like, I'm going to put you on a budget of, <laughs> of how much you're going to, because he just makes them uh, there. Like, you can just roll <laughs> it down the road. Uh, so I, think, I think kids, uh, kids are the same all over the world. Yeah, exactly. It <laughs> seems like it. Oh, Alyssa, thank you very much for chatting today and um, we'll speak again. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate meeting you <laughs> and having this opportunity to talk. Oh, thank you.